Hi and welcome to the National Nano Fabrication Center situated at the Center for Nano Science and Engineering inside the Indian Institute of Science campus in Bengaluru. Today we are going to learn about some of the protocols, safety rules and first aid procedures that are strictly followed at the National Nano Fabrication Center also called as NNFC. The Center for Nano Science and Engineering or SENS was established in 2010 to pursue interdisciplinary research on the nanoscale. SENSE houses a state-of-the-art National Nano Fabrication Center or NNFC which holds a 2000 square feet class 100 and a 8000 square feet class 1000 clean room areas. SENSE also houses a comprehensive micro nano characterization facility or MNCF to conduct virtually any type of electrical, optical, mechanical or material characterization. Hi, I am Rudra Pratap, a professor of the center and also one of the architects of our nano fabrication facility. Today, I am going to talk to you about the importance of safety protocols and safety training. This center, this facility, the fab facility is a multi-user facility. There are lots of people of different backgrounds, different kinds, who use this facility. It's extremely important that we maintain cleanliness of the facility. We maintain the facility in its top shape so that every user has the best experience in terms of working there and in terms of getting results. If these protocols are not in place, you will never have reproducible results. Therefore, it is extremely important that you know what to do and what not to do inside the fabrication facility. Also, in your own interest, you must know that the facility houses many hazardous chemicals, gases, and even instruments. If you are not aware of the dangers or hazards, you are likely to do things which can cause trouble for others and yourself as well. Therefore, knowing what the potential problems are, what potential hazards are and what to do in case of any accident or in case of emergencies, what steps to take is extremely important. When in doubt, ask first. Do not do anything that you are not sure of. There are facility technologies to help you. Ignorance of rules or being in a hurry is never a good reason for doing things that can cause trouble for others and yourself as well. Safety first. Why we emphasize safety training here is that we are aware you are not trained in school or at college level in lab safety therefore it is extremely important for us to make you aware of safety protocols of lab protocols so that you have best working experience in the fab and you get the results that you wish and you deserve Thank you. Before entering the clean room, users must be aware of some of the rules and regulations that need to be followed inside the clean room. Please make sure that there is no application of powdered substances on your forehead or face, flowers in your hair and that you are not suffering from cold, cough or other respiratory diseases. Wash your face well before entering the clean room. Your hands should be washed properly with hand wash and your mouths should be rinsed if you have eaten something. If you smoke, please make sure that you have rinsed your mouth and have had a drink of water. Please make sure that your shoes are cleaned using the shoe cleaner brush at the NNFC doorstep. Make sure that you are wearing clean and dry clothes and your socks are clean. In case you have long hair, please make sure that your hair is tied up before entering the clean room corridor. 
स्लीवलेस शर्ट्स हाफ पैंट्स हैवी ज्वेलरी कॉन्टैक्ट लेंसेस और परफ्यूम्स आर स्ट्रिक्टली प्रोहिबिटेड क्लीन रूम एंट्री इज रिस्ट्रिक्टेड बाई बायोमेट्रिक एक्सेस प्लीज नोट दैट यू आर रिक्वायर्ड टू पास द क्लीन रूम टेस्ट बिफोर गेनिंग बायोमेट्रिक एक्सेस टू द क्लीन रूम टेल गेटिंग इज स्ट्रिक्टली प्रोहिबिटेड एंड एनी वन फाउंड वायोलेटिंग द रूल्स विल हैव दर एक्सेस टर्मिनेटेड इमीजिएटली Please also make sure you store your bags, jackets as well as slippers or shoes at the designated places inside the clean room corridor. Please ensure you use the foot covers and corridor slippers provided before entering the clean room premises. Samples should be taken in and out of the clean room through the pass box and should not be carried through the air shower. Prior approval is needed for carrying in any new items. Please note that while entering the clean room, tailgating is strictly prohibited. Please go through the air shower to ensure that the dust particles are washed off and then enter the clean room gowning area. This is a clean room. Uh, more impressive than building a clean room is actually keeping it clean. The biggest contaminant in a clean room is the human himself. During any normal activity humans generate thousands of millions of particles and the only way to prevent that those particles from contaminating a clean room is to have a very strict gowning procedure. wearing a gown is our method of preventing the cross contamination think of gown as a barrier between you and the clean room a gown is designed in a way so as all the particles that you produce are contained and do not pollute the environment but for the gown to work as designed it is extremely important that you wear it correctly please pay close attention to the gowning procedure the details are important and the procedure has to be followed exactly Please note that the gowning procedure needs to be strictly followed. Gowning proceeds through five steps starting with face mask, hair net, gown, boots and finally gloves. While wearing the face mask, make sure that the metal piece on the mask is kept up and slightly bent to ensure a snug fit. All the hair needs to be put inside and should not be visible outside. Gowns are available in different sizes from small to double XL. Choose the right size and make sure that the gown is not dragged along the floor making it contaminated. Boots are also available in different sizes and please make sure that fully covered plastic boots are selected if your work inside the clean room involves wet benches. Step into the clean area only after wearing the footwear. However, please note that the boots cannot be taken outside the clean area marked by the benches.
gloves the last step in the gowning procedure should be worn only after making sure that all the other steps have been completed perfectly and your hair is fully contained inside the hair net please make sure that appropriate size gloves are chosen and the cuffs of the gown is tucked inside the gloves Please make sure that you wear all the necessary personal protection equipment before you start working in the wet edge room. Also, remember to wear the hand gloves properly without any gaps. Always check for torn edges in the gloves before wearing them. If the gloves are torn, please pick up another pair of hand gloves. Make sure you also wear the chemical resistant apron as well as the eyewear and the helmet which should fit comfortably. Safety shower and eye shower is located at the wet edge bay and should be utilized in case of a chemical spill on a person. National Nano Fabrication Facility is a national user facility, which means any researcher in India can come and access the facility and do their research. Under this program, Sense has hosted thousands of researchers from hundreds of institutes to come and do their research over the last five years. With such a large user base, one of the primary problems that crops up is cross contamination. How do you ensure that the process done by a user A does not affect things that the user B wants to do? The main way which we handle this is a cross-contamination policy. By cross-contamination, I mean that equipment used by, an, uh, by a user A does not contaminate or leave the equipment in such a bad state that the user following them cannot use it. Uh, to prevent that, Sense has a very strict cross-contamination policy. Uh, the, the contamination policy lays down certain rules of what is allowed and not allowed in a certain equipment. Uh, equipments are grouped into certain levels. Uh, level 1 being the cleanest and level 4 being the most unclean and that decides what sort of materials or processes will be allowed inside them. It's very important that WWE follows the cross-contamination policy because that is what ensures repeatable devices and faster work. Please make sure that you follow the contamination policy while working. Please make sure that you use the blue Eftelon gloves if you are handling hydrofluoric acid and the yellow MAPA gloves while handling other concentrated acids. Please ensure that you use the appropriate glassware designated for each of the levels that you are working in. Level 1 for example is denoted by the color blue and so are the glasswares meant to be used in it. Always use a level 1 tweezer while working. Any acid or alkali which has been used already 
can be safely disposed down the hood drain only after the acid or alkali has completely cooled. After processing in the RCA level 1 wet bench, the silicon wafer can now be moved to the level 1 furnace. Now, let us look at how we can go from the level 1 diffusion bay into the photolithography room. Let us now look at how the wafer can be brought to the diffusion furnace after the photolithography process. After lithography, the oxide should be removed in level 2 oxide H bench, followed by a photoresist strip at level 2 solvent or basis bench. The wafer goes back to level 2 acid clean bench for RCA and then comes back to level 1 acid clean bench for another RCA. Now, the sample can be moved back to the furnace for diffusion. The buddy system has to be strictly followed inside the clean room 24-7. Please make sure that you are not the only person working inside the clean room and in case no one is around in the room you want to work in, please find someone who has access to the clean room and request them to be present with you. This is in the interest of your own safety while working in the clean room. Use of cell phones during ongoing processes inside the clean room is strictly prohibited even if your phones are used. Please make sure you store your cell phones in the designated area before entering the clean room. Please note that bringing in or taking out of any equipment from the clean room is strictly prohibited. If you find any piece of equipment malfunctioning, please notify BMS immediately. In case of an acid spill on the floor or the hood, please make sure you follow the following instructions. If an acid is spilt while working, immediately fetch the chemical absorbing pillows and strategically place them around the area of the acid spill so that the acid spill is immediately contained within that area. Once the area is contained, place the absorbing spill blankets directly over the acid spill. Please ensure that you call BMS at 115 immediately and report the acid spill to them.
Evacuate the place immediately. Close the door of the wet edge and pull a do not enter cordon tape in front of the door so that others working in the clean room are also informed of the acid spill. Please evacuate the place immediately. Close the door of the wet edge room and pull the do not enter cordon tape in front of the door so that others working in the clean room are also informed of the acid spill. Hydrofluoric acid or HF is the most hazardous acid used in the NNFC clean room. It is essential to remember the safety procedures and first aid protocols before handling hydrofluoric acid. If you're going to handle HF, make sure you do not work alone in the wet edge bay even if there are people working in other bays. In case of spill, immediately remove the contaminated clothing and ensure that the acid is not touching other parts of your body. Rinse the affected areas with large amounts of water and call for help. Application of calcium gluconate gel using an uncontaminated glove should be started within 5 minutes of exposure to the acid. Inform BMS at 115 and ask for medical attention specifically communicating that it is a HF accident. Carry the HF treatment chart kept near the door with you and continue applying the calcium gluconate gel until you reach a doctor. It is essential that you know about NNFC's alarm systems as well as emergency and safety procedures before you enter the clean room. Please note that if the power is not restored in 2 minutes, you need to evacuate the clean room immediately. Fire and smoke alarms are present in the clean room corridor just outside the films room. Fire alarm is a loud hooter while smoke alarm comprises of a hooter and flashing lights. Any activation of these alarms warrants an immediate evacuation of the clean room. While evacuating, please remember to get out through the nearest exit without waiting to remove your gown. The evacuees from the clean room need to assemble at assembly area 2 or 3 according to the sense evacuation procedures. On the other hand, gas leak alarms are specific to the LPCVD and diffusion furnace which are present at the diffusion bay. In response to the alarm, please evacuate immediately through the nearest exit. Once you are safely out of the clean room, make sure that you immediately call up and inform BMS. While exiting the clean room, please make sure that you degown properly and follow the instructions. Please make sure that the head cap, mask and contaminated gloves are properly disposed in the trash can. Make sure that your footwear is placed properly in the designated place. After degowning, please make sure that the gown is placed properly in the designated place. Whenever you are working in the clean room, please remember that your safety is your personal responsibility.
थैंक यू